John Brown, 59 years old, often referred to as the old man when he comes to Harpers Ferry in 1859. Born even before Thomas Jefferson becomes president. Now here before Lincoln becomes president. Brown hated slavery. For most of his life, he had fought against slavery. He had watched the Congress deal with the issue of slavery and they were not able to abolish it. He had watched the Supreme Court deal with the issue of slavery. Not only did they not abolish slavery, they affirmed it. They confirmed it as legal and continuing. And so Brown believed that since his government had failed him, that he needed to do something, and he did. And he literally went to war with the people of the United States and the United States government over the continued existence of slavery. Brown chose Harper's Ferry to launch his war because we had here thousands of weapons, 100,000 weapons stored here in 1859. Rifles, muskets, pistols. You're gonna have a war, you need weapons. So the plan was get into Harper's Ferry, seize some of the weapons, get out. Get into the mountains, the Appalachian chain that runs south all the way into Georgia and Alabama. And then have raiding parties that would go to plantations and estates throughout the south and bring slaves with them under the protection, under the defensive protection of these armed men. Bring them back into the mountains and then have these various trails that they could follow again with protection as they would head north into freedom in the promised land. In essence, John Brown was taking the concept of the Underground Railroad, which was a very dangerous proposition and a difficult expedition because you did it on your own and you had no support along the way in terms of armed escorts and people were chasing you. So the idea was, let's not just have individuals escape, but let's bring whole families. The Underground Railroad by itself often resulted in the division of families because not everyone could go. So Brown wanted everyone to go and bring along and be able to protect and defend as he would escort them through the mountains, up the Appalachians, all the way from Georgia and Alabama, north into Pennsylvania. The plan didn't work. Ultimately, he would be trapped here at Harpers Ferry. He would be captured by United States Marines commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Robert E. Lee. Not killed, wounded. Taken from here to nearby Charlestown, placed on trial. He's gonna be tried for three things. Murder, people died during the raid, including the town's mayor. Mayor of Harper Strait was killed. Treason, Brown actually had his own constitution and it was discovered. Third, he was, in, he, was, he was tried for inciting slave rebellion. Each of those, murder, treason, insurrection, each one of those by itself is a capital offense. So the jury, all white of course, will find Brown guilty on all three counts. The judge will determine that the only answer for John Brown is the noose. And on December the 2nd, 1859, John Brown will be executed in Charlestown, hanged. And uh, many people say he never died on that gallows. Uh, he was dead, but John Brown did not die because he had created his own movement. He now became a martyr. And for those people in the North, they now saw John Brown as a symbol of freedom fighting. In the South, he became the devil incarnate evil itself, attacking their culture and the whole idea of the institution of slavery. And so Brown was very polarizing. Many people say that the first shots of the Civil War were fired in Charleston Harbor, Fort Sumter, South Carolina. True, those were early shots. But you can point at Harper's Ferry. You can point at October 1859. You can point at this location, even before the election of Abraham Lincoln and before Fort Sumter, and say with absolute certitude 
that John Brown sent America reeling towards civil war over the issue of slavery.